This is Ranger Kidwell Ross, editor at WorldSweeper.com, and we're at the 2020 National Pavement Expo in Nashville, Tennessee. This walk around is going to be about the Elgin Regen X, and we have someone with us that is an expert on that. And in fact, I'm going to let uh, Eric tell you about his part that he played in this. But the Regen X is such a different machine for the industry, and what the project that Eric led uh, to develop, have this machine co-developed kind of by contractors around the country, uh, we felt was, the re was uh, notable enough that we made Elgin Sweepers the Award of Excellence in Power Sweeping uh, winner, award winner for 2020. So this is the guy that is really responsible for Elgin winning that award. Uh, I'm sure he'd be glad to take that credit since there's no blame to it. And uh, it's Eric Marks, and, and talk about that, Eric. You led the, the uh, kind of spearhead of the campaign to involve uh, contractors, I understand. So we followed the Federal Signal innovation process that we were doing under the umbrella of Federal Signal for the regenerative air market. And we did a lot of voice to customer stuff. We went out to the market, different geographies, different users, different levels uh, within organizations, municipalities, contractors, um, all of the above. And we didn't have a unit. We didn't even think we were going to build a unit. And we really wanted to see what the market wanted, where we excelled at, and where we had some deficiencies as Elgin Sweeper. So we did that. We, we came back around and we did multiple presentations to upper management. And we, we identified where we felt we were strong and where we felt we had some opportunities. Metaphorically speaking, they went into another room and they came out and they said, let's do something we haven't done in a long time. Let's build a, a new Regen Sweeper from the ground up. And That's I want to break in to say that uh, one of the advisory board members at World, My World Sweeping Association, Carl Stoddy, uh, was the person that uh, nominated Elgin. And when I looked into it, it certainly made sense. And he was very uh, enthusiastic and uh, complimentary about how that process took place uh, such that Elgin uh, came up with a machine that uh, was the consensus of, as you say, contractors, municipalities, so forth. Yeah, we, we, we referenced Carl three different occasions. First, in the original voice of the customer, um, learning more about what contractors want and things that to look for, and if they had the ability to build a sweeper, what would they like? Secondly, we came up with a concept model, uh, just an AutoCAD type of thing, um, and then we brought it to Carl, we let him get out his pen and mark it up, and he would say things like, I love this, but this is terrible, and give us the, that kind of guidance and direction based on his years and decades of experience. And then thirdly, when we got to uh, our third stage, what we called, um, we built a minimally viable prototype. We took that prototype to Carl, we let him look around it, climb around it, let his operators drive it, and we solicited even more feedback from him on that on occasion. We did all of that before even going to a pre-production phase. So what that allowed us to do is it allowed us to make quick changes where we'd cut some things off and re-weld them and just use spray paint because the idea was not to have a pretty unit, but it was to learn and learn fast. All right. Well, what's, uh, so show us, I mean, everybody watching this is probably pretty familiar with probably Elgin uh, as the leading uh, sweeper company in America, but, uh, and also the air sweeper concept. Uh, what are we looking at? Is it, uh, I, my guess is it's a regenerative air machine with the name Regen X. It, uh, is, it is a regenerative. Just a guess. It is a regenerative air machine. It's the, the technology we didn't change, it still has your fan, your pressure slot, suction tube, and your uh, pressure tube. One of the things that is a little bit different with this that you've seen it in the what low dump or non scissor lift market is what we call a mid dump. All right. And so we were able to give a customer still a six cubic yard usable hopper. It's eight cubic yard uh, volumetric, and we are able to give them a sixty inch dump, and without adding very much expense at all. So let's take a good look at your dump uh, system here. So we pivot right here, and right. basically the difference to be able to dump at a higher dimension is the additional cost is steel and some welding. So over the life of a sweeper, that's a small investment to be able to dump into a container. Sure. We've heard many folks that from envir for environmental reasons, they're being guided to dump in containers. And many others are talking about uh, that coming down the pike for them, mm -hmm. that they may have, to, that is a requirement for them. 
Some others like to dump in containers from pure efficiency standpoint to avoid the double handling at the end of a day. Sure. So um, many customers, we actually feel most of the customers that buy this unit will dump on the ground and it gives them the, the flexibility to dump in a container, but even if they dump on the ground, they're paying very little extra for that ability as opposed to a scissors lift where if you, you would dump on the ground, that's quite a quite substantial investment. And when it comes to uh, debris disposal, we're really in a pretty fast moving track these days and varying from state to state and so forth. So that's uh, that seems like a very good plan. Uh, Sometimes to give county that to county. Can uh -huh. There you go. So All right, yeah, keep going. So then with, with that additional height and that pivot point, it allows you, gives you some real estate here. Uh -huh. and what, what we believe is the most predominant solution for that is toolboxes. These are an option, a, a user can buy their own toolboxes or they can buy these right here that we offer as an option. Uh, we are in the process of developing tool trays, multiple different tool trays with holes for bungees and things of that nature that we think will afford users some opportunity. Okay. We've even seen some users take the space with a tool tray and put large limbs and things of that nature that are on the street they encounter during their sweep path. The other thing that we'll be able to do with that space is offer an auxiliary water tank if you want more water. Okay. We believe that we'll have in excess somewhere in the, the ballpark of about 115 extra gallons to be complementary with the 265 gallons that we have up front. And uh, what kind of propulsion are you looking at uh, with your auxiliary? Should we walk around uh, sure. on that side? So we use a John Deere 4045 74 horsepower Tier 4 final compliant engine. That um, engine, because it is below the 75 horsepower threshold, does not need depth fluid. Um, but it is tier 4 final compliant. We drive, um, we don't have the fan drive cover off here, but we drive a shaft. Um, actually, this, this unit here has a fluid coupler on it as well. It helps dampen the startup and shutdown of the engine. Um, it drives the shaft here, which drives a belt, which drives the fan. Um, it's a closed phase fan. Uh, that we made the diameter slightly bigger than our crosswind model because we want to drive it a little bit slower but have similar CFM. The, the, the larger the fan you have, the slower you have to drive it to achieve uh, appropriate CFM. Um, this fan cover comes off very quickly. It's two 916 cents bolts, or nuts, I'm sorry and it sits on two pins up top, it's okay. really hard to see. And then this cover just lifts off, off those pins. Yeah. And then exterior to this, then you have a reverse tension, spring-loaded tensioner that maintains constant pressure on that spring. All one has to do is take the idler pulley, pull against that spring, and pull the belt off, and put another one on. We, we claim that you can do a, a fan dry belt replacement within five minutes, it includes taking off these nuts My goodness. and the cover and putting them back on. Um, I love advancements like in technology. These just seem to like that. This is an interesting thing. Our mm -hmm. first prototype that we took out had right-hand exhaust and we asked, once again, voice of the customer, what would you change on this unit? And one, one gentleman said, it's great that you have this new unit and these new features, but who is the smart guy that took and put the highest point of the unit on the right side of the machine where the where the tree line is. And we said, wow, that's a great point. So we looked into it, and now we buy this out of the factory on the left-hand side. Just, it's a great example of some of the uh, iterations that we made with the voice of the customer. Mm -hmm. That kind of, uh, that kind of obvious stuff, uh, I look back, I bought the first Plymouth Voyager the first year that they came out, and the sales guy, uh, Talk to me about how. Oh, look at this! The seats come out really easily, and you can uh, you can put in a sheet of plywood in between the wheel wells. And the first sheet of plywood I did uh, a couple of weeks later turned out there was 47 and three quarters inches between the wheel wells. <laughs> that's funny. Um, another voice of the customer thing that's very evident here is our airlines and hydraulic lines, electrical. We took a lot of this in, in prior units that others didn't do. They put this in the frame rails. 
that environment in the frame rails is very dirty, grimy, wet, and it, um, it lives in a very tough environment, very difficult to clean. Mm -hmm. we, we took the engineering time to t take this and make this exterior, number one, to keep it out of that bad environment, keep it clean, and if a uh, service technician needs to get at it, it's very easy to get at it as opposed to crawling out of the frame rails. We put in such features as this rounded corner that we weld here to keep from sharp edges from the, these routings to rub on the, the corners. So we have this radius piece here to protect that. Everything on this unit has a purpose for the end user of some kind that holds value that we believe. Mm -hmm. um, we, we tried to, uh, it's a cost competitive market, we tried to keep any excess frills that didn't really hold value to the end user off the unit keep their price point lower. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, the, the sweeping head standard Elgin region? It's head, actually slightly or? different. Um, we have a, a steel ramp and then the pressure slot is a steel pressure slot that's recessed slightly above that ramp. That ramp protects the bottom or the that, that pressure slot. Okay. A lot, lot of people will do a, a, a rubber curtain on the pressure slot. That rubber gets warm with the warm air and it flows and then therefore your gap in your pressure slot will vary and we've we learned through testing that there's different there's specific dimensions that perform better than others and therefore we're able to hold a tight pressure slot dimension for impre increased uh, sweep performance okay this head what a small thing that we heard from customers is if you have to take the head out and service it sometimes it interferes with the drive line you have to jack it up this head has clearance to just to drop it and slide it out Okay. Small thing, I don't care what the name is on the side of your unit, if you keep your pickup head clean, you will generally have a better sweep performance situation and you'll enhance the life of the unit. If you have wet, mud, muddy debris that just cakes onto the inside of the head and it's never um, cleaned, it will eventually rust through the steel. One of, so we think if we make it easy to clean the head, the users are more apt to do so. So we tell the users to do two things when cleaning the head drop the door in the vacuum and answer, put a hose there for 30 seconds or so, flush that pressure slot, get your pressure, or on the pressure chamber, get your pressure slot clean. We added this very inexpensive but effective method for cleaning out the suction oh, side of the, of the pickup head. Uh, it'll accept just about any hose. You put the hose in there, the user stays dry, he stays clean, and he can put it in there, kick it around, aim it around, pull it out, and he's done. He does that every day. You're, you're, you're going to have longer life on your head and a no better question. performing uh, pickup head. Um, once again, external, we have the, the manifold, the hydraulic manifold, exterior, easy to get at. This sweeper, we don't have any controllers on the sweeper. There's no, nothing that would need to be diagnosed um, with a laptop for the sweeper. There's a controller right. on the John Deere engine and there's a controller on the, uh, for the chassis. But for the most part, it's um, your old school technicians can handle anything on this without um, any laptops or internet cloud-based um, support. That's a, that's very strong as well. And I see uh, the room for a, another toolbox over here. Or, Absolutely. Now, can you put water on both sides if you wanted to, or, or of, just to one side? Of like here? Yeah. Um, right now, we, we haven't designed anything to hold water on, on okay. both sides. Someday we've talked about possibly looking at that, but we have to figure out what that does to the weight and some of the other sure. configurations. And once again, we believe that's a voice of the customer thing. Does mm -hmm. the market want that? And if so, why? And if that's the best solution that... Um, the future of this unit is really going to be driven by the market, not internally at the office at LG. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, as our uh, watchers can see, the hopper is a quite a bit different configuration than many, and uh, I've already heard good things about how it dumps, and uh, it has a real surprising volumetric compared to the profile. So that's a that's a strong feature, I would think. With so this. I'll I'll compare it a little bit to our crosswind model. Our crosswind model has a 10 degree slanted floor, and with those 10 degrees. When you optically look at this hopper versus the crosswind hopper, that 10 degrees, you lose some volumetric capacity with that angle. The other thing we do is we put um, put weld sheets on the bottom of that angle to make it, it, it optically then it looks like a larger box. The other thing you have going on in the crosswind and many other street sweepers is you have your dust separation inside your hopper. 
mm -hmm. that when you do that, you lose volumetric usable capacity. Of course. In this case, we have our dust separator bolt on exterior to the hopper. Uh -huh. So this hopper isn't fully open, but inside of it, it's completely empty except for a deflector. And that deflects the material as it comes in on the right side to the center of the unit. We've done much testing to make sure it loads from the center outward left to right. So you get the most usable um, functional functionality out of uh, your space. That hopper, it, it is eight cubic yards volumetric. We strongly believe that you can easily get six in there. Um, we tried to tuck the screens up as tight as possible to the roof to enhance that capacity. I saw a pile of leaves that uh, were left, were dumped from this machine, and it was very impressive indeed. Well, and, and not only is it impressive, but when it comes out, it expands because it, it packs them in there. It must have, them because tightly. it was quite a pile. And one of the things we actually did, we spent the day, we went to visit a dump truck manufacturer and how they build their bodies, and a dump truck um, contractor really needs to make sure that their load is evacuated when they dump it. And really, those, these radius corners here is a result of that visit to the ah. dump truck manufacturer. Uh -huh. And thank you. We have found anytime you have corners or nooks or crannies, stuff will build up. And Absolutely. when it builds up, it also inhibits the evacuation of the load. So sure. we try to. Um, Which avoid encourages that as much rust. As Which encourages rust as well. Yeah. Great point. And what chassis is this put on? This is a Freightliner M2 chassis. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is probably the most common in, in this Regen Class 7 chassis market. It's a very good chassis. Uh, we have had great luck with it over the years and we know it well. All right. Was well, there anything else we should know about this machine? Um, there's uh, some other touch points on the other side we could take a look All at right. that once again are easily accessible for service purposes. Sure. And again, we're yeah, looking at Elgin Region X. So we have your certain like your daily checks, your hydraulic oil, your fuel water separator, your your ox engine oil filter. We have provisions for um, hydraulic draining, the draining the engine oil, trying to make that easier for the technicians, where we run lines to the outside so that they don't have to come up with their own way to evacuate oil right on the machine. We have the water manifold um, accessible. We have the water filter is not on because it's a show right now, but it sets right in there. Mm -hmm. This one has two water pumps, one for the normal system and one for the front spray bar, right adjacent to you, very accessible. Um, simple type of thing here. We have float balls for our water level that can easily be seen in the rear view mirror of the op by the operator in the truck. Right here is half full. This is empty. This is full. He can tell where he's going. No electronics to fail. No actuators, etc. Makes sense. Sounds like something a contractor would do. Sounds like, and, and we, we learned a lot of that from the contractors. A lot of our contractors told us don't make a styly machine or if you have to decide between style and functionality, always go to functionality. And we, that resonated um, uh, a tremendous amount. So much so that at some point we came back and we were working with a designer and an engineer on this unit and we ingrained that into their heads. And there were times where they would tell us a certain aspect that we were, we were asking for or discussing. They would, they would be the ones that tell us, no, we have to have, make this basic, make it functional, make it robust, make it reliable, etc. And it, it became contagious. So it was really, it was a really great project to work on. All right, this is uh, this has been fun. Is, uh, are we done? You reckon? Um, essentially, um, the, right. the, the other standard things with Elgin, we have our water lines. Anytime you have water lines, they're green, so it's easy for people to see what it is. Um, all the way down to our overflow with our water I saw tank. That, yeah. It's a very common thing. If you buy any Elgin, that, that'll hold true throughout. Um, our, our inlet deflector, once again, that's bolt-on. As that wears easily, relatively inexpensive part, doesn't affect your hopper. You can unbolt that, that inlet, pull it off, and replace it. Well, there's a lot of impressive points here. Congratulations on uh, what a lot of people think is a home run. 
we hope so. We hope so. And I, I believe it'll continue. It'll, it'll evolve over the, the future years sure. to some degree. Yeah, no, no doubt. Okay, well, everybody uh, kn knows how to get there probably, but tell us uh, what the website is for Elgin and uh, we'll... www.elginsweeper.com. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.